Here on this Tobacco University video, we go over understanding light intensity to drive cannabis production. All right, let's see how light intensity plays a role with cannabis production. Well, first off, giving the plant more light you'd think would naturally always be better. And when you give the plant more light, this can theoretically increase photosynthesis and result in more biomass. However, no other factors can be limiting for this to occur. Those other factors can include water, nutrients, air, carbon dioxide, and kind of a few other things. Increasing PPFD uh, past 850 to 900 micromoles per meter per second, um, a meter squared per second, will require carbon dioxide enrichment to take advantage of this level of light. So just keep that in mind. And we're looking at, you know, we want to have a good root structure. We don't want to have any disease. There's other little factors uh, to consider. But when we start to get above that 850 to 900, if you're not supplementing with carbon dioxide, you're not going to allow those plants to take full advantage of that additional light intensity that you're providing for them. So light intensity by strain. Well, all cannabis can be treated as a high light intensity tolerant since all have been bred outside for an extended period of time during the history of plants domestication process. So what that means is because this is a recently brought inside plant, but for the most part an outdoor grown plant, it has been bred and allowed to be able to handle the intensities of natural sunlight, which typically is a lot higher than what plants would be experiencing in an indoor environment. We can see our light intensity increasing and our yield also increasing. While this does look linear, don't think that this continues on forever. So growers typically increase the PPFD as the plant ages, and that's simply referring to the intensity um, of light. So while some growers increase light intensity with age, if the plant requirements are kept optimum, plants can be grown at high uh, consistent PPFDs. And again, that stands for photosynthetic photon flux density. This can be a challenge with water, especially when plants and root systems are small. So this is part of the reason why growers tend to increase that as plants age. But as in the picture here, shows with the graph where as we're increasing those intensities here with the vegetative going to fruits and flower and kind of going to the end here this potentially could be brought up much sooner because maintaining high PDF PPFD will maximize plant productivity for all strains but is especially important for auto flowers that have only a limited number of days to complete their life cycle so you want to give the plant as much light as it can handle without burning it or causing uh, negative setbacks and typically this can be a little bit higher uh, than some growers often will provide their plants so we're looking at net photosynthesis while increasing the um, transpiration so net photosynthesis and transpiration while increasing the light intensity measured in PPFD. Photosynthetic response of cannabis. Variations in net photosynthesis for cannabis sativa with varying photosynthetic photon flux densities. Remember that's what PPFD stands for in temperature conditions expressed in Celsius. So if we look at our little graphs here, what does this kind of mean? Well, we have our photon flux density, again, both on the x-axis down here and net photosynthesis here on the y. And we can see that there is an increase and then kind of all leveling off here with regards to net photosynthesis. Here on this uh, graph here, we have the rate of transpiration, which is the movement of water through plants. So when we're looking at photosynthetic rate, we are seeing kind of a little bit of a leveling off, sometimes a decrease, uh, kind of above that 1500. That same 1500, we're seeing water consumption also being at the highest level. So you want to have this balance between the plants being able to maintain their trigger pressure uh, while still growing at the most aggressive rate possible. So light intensity maximum, while no carbon dioxide enrichment, the maximum PPFD for the plants utilized is about 900 micromoles per meter squared per second. For plants to use higher light levels uh, over this, this, carbon dioxide needs to be added to the growing environment. So this is where we're having, we can add more light and that's great, but we want to maximize that. We want to be supplementing also with carbon dioxide. And one note about this graph, the Two should be as a subscript, not a superscript, so just keep that in mind. The PPFD level determination by CO2 concentration. So this is referring to concentration of CO2 uh, right, up, right up over here. Since CO2 concentration will be the limiting factor, the level of carbon dioxide in a grow space determines the maximum light intensity plants can use, and we see that represented right here. And again, this assumes all other factors are not limiting, water, nutrients, health of the plant in, in general. 
So if we're maximizing at 400 uh, parts per million uh, for carbon dioxide, that'd be the natural atmospheric conditions. You're looking at a light intensity estimated on this graph around 500. If we double our carbon dioxide, we go from about 500 to about uh, probably 850 um, PPFDs. And we go to 1400 in this graph represented here, we can go over a, a thousand on the light intensity. So again, keep that in mind that yes, you can give plants more light, but if they don't have the CO2, they will not be able to utilize that light. So light intensity at both extremes. So while growers focus on the maximum light intensity to get the greatest yield for photoperiod dependent strains, it's also important to consider the other end of the spectrum. While it can be difficult to measure low light levels without special sensitive equipment at least, it is also important to consider how dark the dark period needs to be. A lot of growers are concerned with blackout and then one little pinhole and they wanna make sure that there's absolutely zero light at all. So how dark should the dark period be? And this is a good question, particularly for the indoor growers. Well, most growers will ensure that there's not a pinhole-sized amount of light entering plants during this dark phase. This may be unnecessary. Keep in mind, plants growing outside, regular photoperiod-dependent ones, full moonlight will not impact cannabis. Light sensitive at night, just like poinsettias. So the full moon intensity of light will not affect cannabis plants. However, it may not take much more light exposure than a full moon to have plants considered to be a day or a light on period. So just realize that dark does not have to be 100% no light. So while it is important to kind of seal areas off, you don't have to be completely going over every teeny little pinhole um, in the sense that your whole plant's gonna flip into flower or go and stay in veg. Uh, keep in mind, plants grown outside, full moonlight keeps them on the same photo period. So again, just keep that in mind, particularly for the indoor growers.